At the northeastern part of the Indian Ocean lies the Bay of Bengal, whose coasts are home to over 200 million people, many of whom are highly dependent on fishing for their livelihoods. And the Bay of Bengal is running low on fish. Reckless overfishing, climate change, and poor management practices from fish farms have vastly affected our global marine fish stock levels. You might not feel it, but we're facing a serious issue. A UN report claims that nearly 90% of the world's marine fish stocks are fully exploited, overexploited, or depleted. But with the world's population continuing to grow, the demand for seafood is expected to increase significantly. So how can we continue providing seafood for a growing world population? Aquaculture. Aquaculture, in terms of providing mankind with a sustainable source of protein, uh, is actually very fast growing. In fact, it's actually overtaken, it's surpassed global wild-caught fisheries in terms of being our primary source of seafood. Aquaculture, also known as fish farming, is a practice of breeding, raising and harvesting aquatic organisms. Due to their cold-blooded physiology, fish are generally much more effective in converting feed to edible meat than terrestrial animals. As the demand for seafood continues to rise, aquaculture is becoming an increasingly important part of the global food system. James is the CEO of the Baramandi Group, and he's incredibly passionate about, you guess it, Baramandi. Also known as Asian sea bass, Baramandi is a white flesh fish with a mellow flavor and a firm texture. It's an excellent source of lean protein and omega-3 fatty acid, which is why James thinks Baramandi is the tropics' answer to salmon. A lot of the emphasis in the last 40 years has been on these large salmon companies that are producing intensively in the north, right, in cold temperate waters. What's really interesting is that in the tropics, if the, you have the right species, right, like Baramandi, you actually have a fast-growing, fast-converting fish. While aquaculture has the potential to grow food more efficiently than most forms of animal agriculture, with less reliance on natural resources, the industry faces several challenges. Firstly, reducing its environmental impact. In aquaculture operations, fish are fed with fish meal and fish oil, which provide high-quality protein and other essential nutrients for growth. However, most fish meal and fish oil are produced from an unsustainable source, small fish near the base of ocean food webs. The feed is about 40 to 50 percent of the production cost. If the major ingredient or the cost of the feed coming from the fish meal which we use today to make the feed, then you can imagine how expensive it is to produce a kg of the fish. In intensive marine fish farming, uneaten feed and fish waste may spill out of nets into the ocean causing nutrient pollution. Microalgae consume the nutrients and grow at an exponential rate, causing fish to die from low oxygen levels. Thankfully, advances in technology and research are helping to mitigate the environmental impact of aquaculture. The industry has made headway in reducing the use of fish meal and fish oil on feed formulations. Researchers are exploring alternatives that are economically and environmentally sustainable, including insect larvae, microalgae, and single-cell proteins. Recirculating aquaculture systems, or RAS for short, is a technology used by some land-based fish farms to control all environmental facets of production by continuously filtering, treating, and reusing water. You need to contain that water that you use to grow animals. Okay? So we don't want to discharge the water into the oceans or into the river, right? So you have to make sure whatever you discharge will be okay for the environment. Now, if we could put so much energy and efforts to make sure your discharge is clean before it goes to the environment, why not you reuse it? So if I can clean it up to meet the environmental standards, okay, why not I use it? I think one of the biggest challenges for RAS technology especially in today's environment where you have uh, very high energy costs, is how do we get that unitary cost of that fish uh, so that it's affordable for the masses. We're now producing baramundi in our RAS system in Brunei at a cost that's significantly lower and that's allowing us now to grow at scale sustainably on land. 
Disease is estimated to cost the aquaculture industry more than $6 billion every year. Crowding animals into a single environment carries with it the high risk of contracting and spreading infectious diseases. One way to tackle disease is through developing vaccines, which can be used to boost immunity against fish diseases. For farmers like us, uh, it's essential that we have uh, vaccines. We have a wholly owned subsidiary, Uvax, that produces, or researches and produces autogenous vaccines that allow us to then support the growth of this fish throughout its entire life cycle. Animal welfare is a very big priority for us in Baramandi Group. As they say, a happy fish, right, is a healthy fish, and one that actually grows a lot faster, and uh, it actually also produces a much better product. So uh, that's what we are aiming for. Besides vaccines, research into the genetics of disease resistance and selective breeding are playing a vital role in ensuring the health of aquaculture stocks. They help to ensure that only the best fish are selected for mating, creating superior offspring that are more resistant to disease. So our breeding and genetics program actually spans over 20 years. What we do is basically take a animals and naturally select them and breed them so that we get a fish that is faster growing, more disease resilient uh, and also produces more yield. So genetics together with vaccines development will allow us then to grow this fish right in an intensive way so that uh, one day it will become the salmon of the tropics. Overall, the future of aquaculture looks bright. Using science and technology, it is now possible to continue growing fish to meet the twin challenges of food security and environmental sustainability. So there's challenge in every corner, but what's really meaningful about this work that we do is that we get to be stewards of our natural resources, right? the animals, the environment, to grow it in a responsible, sustainable way so that we can produce a protein that can nourish the world.